Hello, welcome back. I'm having a look at Fortress Stalingrad. This is a Thai bomber uh, game. I'm not sure exactly when it was published, but it's S&T 114. I guess I could look on the magazine and tell you, couldn't I? It's got this horrid artwork and cover on it. Uh, this monster swastika and this kind of dead, dead-eyed, thousand-mile stare German dude. Not the most attractive cover uh, I've ever seen. Um, nevertheless, here we are having a look at it. And I'm just trying to see what year this is done. 88. So, you know, it's recent times, I guess, in terms of uh, games. It's not 90s, but it's at late 80s. So, <clears throat> a couple of things about this game as, as it's set up and ready to go. You know, we're looking at a core level, basically, so everything is uh, pretty much core-sized. Bless you, dude. Uh, units have four steps, generally speaking, except for satellite forces, Hungarians and Italians and whatnot, Romanians. And, you know, the objective here is to capture VP locations, cities accumulate points and the Soviets are accumulating points and the Germans are trying to limit the number of points accumulated. And there's a couple of things that go down in this game that, uh, that give it a somewhat unique flavor. So we have these forward supply bases and the Soviets need to be within three hexes of those. And if they're not, then their, their movement rates and their uh, combat factors are decreased by, or decreased by increasing amounts. So you'll knock, if you're more than three hexes away, you're at supply level one, and so you're going to lose 10% of your combat factors and minus one on your movement rate. And it's going to go up from there up to level three. So you'll potentially leave, if you're nine hexes, more than nine hexes away, you'll lose 30% of your combat effectiveness, which is pretty tough. And you've got one, two, three, four, and there's one over there, five, but you can also use the edge of the board there to uh, affect supply. So pretty interesting situation to start with. Uh, we do get to do the classic Sixth Army uh, uh, roll up here if we attack well so you're we're pre-positioned in I think this is yeah November the late November 42 to attack the Romanians on either flank and then try and pocket the entire sixth army if you can a uh, couple of interesting things the some of the wording and the rules is a little tricky there's some very basic commentary you know, if you've never played a war game before, do this, this, and this. So it comes across as a Thai bomber style game from the Command Magazines sort of sort of era, which at some point can get a little tedious. But then uh, they skip over some things that kind of matter. That said, uh, it does look like an interesting system. I was having a look at the combat results table because I've been fairly fixated with combat results tables lately. And I'm going to try and zoom in on this sucker here and see if I can show you what I mean. I want you to have, we're looking from the side, but let's just see if you can follow my reasoning here. If I'm attacking at three to one and rolling low is good here. So if I roll a zero, roll a one, I lose zero steps on the attack and the defender has to either lose three steps or lose a step and retreat two or retreat uh, all three uh, or retreat three hexes. Yeah. Uh, then as the die roll goes up, the the losses for the attacker worsen. Now, really good attacks, I, I inflict more and more damage, right? But I take uh, less, and I take no damage. But uh, I can still I can still do a significant amount of damage if I roll poorly, roll poorly, uh, and I take one loss. But wouldn't it get, at, to some, at some point, wouldn't we really be saying that, hey, if I did a six to one attack and uh, I, I inflicted four losses instead of three losses, that maybe I'd take a loss here and then down here, maybe I'd take two losses instead of three. 
it's just curious, and I'm and I'm mentioning that because <coughs> I did give the uh, the Caucasus campaign a hard time about the size of the loss you had to take there. Whereas with this game, you've got four steps per unit, and taking one, a one step loss might be appropriate at the scale we're at to reflect the impact of the the result of the attack at five to one or six to one so you know who knows N neither here nor there but it's just a, a minor observation as i really start to look at crts more critically as i start to get gain more experience with some of these games that i've been playing so it's just an observation there not a criticism by any means just a, you can do it all sorts of different ways right okay uh what else am I interested in about this game? So the combat, uh, the combat results table is pretty interesting. The supply mechanic is going to basically force the Soviets out of supply or into reduced supply states very quickly because the supply heads only move one hex a turn. Um, that's going to be problematic where the, just the Germans really just have to track uh, 12 movement points back to a rail, a rail line or a city that they control that is connected to a rail line. Lots of Soviet units coming on the board, big sort of surprise attack to get started, and then we'll kind of see how the battle unfolds from there. Um, not too sure how, you know, I don't think these guys are gonna be terribly robust. They're all one, all these chaps here are all one steppers, right? So they'll get, if they get hit, they're gonna melt pretty quickly, but this entire area is pretty much vacant. Now they're entrenchments, and I've got to, I've got to attack them with the strength of their defensive strength of one. But I could get to, you know a two to one or a three to one attack on that hex, and we could you know potentially do some damage and maybe put some pressure on on the Soviets in this this area here. I started reading these design developer notes, and I had to stop because about one third of the way through they start explaining how you know one side versus the other has an advantage in the early game and it's completely sort of it's not really historical but here's what could happen i was like whoa don't spoil the game for me you're basically telling me exactly how to play as the germans or the soviets and i, I don't want to know that i, I want to know that the game is good and when the game is balanced and i want to know the game is uh is going to be something that I'll be giving me some historical flavor. <clears throat> but clearly we do know as, as game players of Eastern Front titles and of this particular conflict and period of time, we're not gonna face, we're not gonna create or, or recreate the mistakes that were made by both sides. So we're gonna have a different type of experience. And that's one of the challenges of designing, right? If you're gonna try and railroad those errors into your game, then probably not gonna be as much fun. So this may well play out as a, a battle of wits and changing, uh, changing the historical approach pretty significantly uh, based on the, the, the halting read that I had. I, I stopped reading the article once I realized that it was gonna to give too much away. Right, oh, so. I'll be checking back in a little while once we get turn one done. And we'll be Soviets moving off with a prepared offense to start with. And we'll talk more about the mechanics and combat and stuff like that if you're interested uh, as, we, as we get into it later on. Ciao.